you know this team very well. What? Yes, fly, <laughs> Eagles, fly. What should the Eagles do with Bradford? Right now, they should keep him. And I think you keep him all the way until you draft a quarterback. And then uh, there'll probably, there might be some teams that call you when, if you take a quarterback, which they're going to do. Uh, but I think if you're the Eagles, um, regardless if you take a guy or not, you can go wait and take this guy and go into to training camp and go, hey, you're going to compete for the position. You're going to draft a rookie quarterback. If the rookie quarterback obviously catches your eye and says this guy's ready to play, uh, then you start calling some teams and ask people, are you interested in uh, Sam Bradford? But right now, he's a part of your football team, and I think you go about doing your work that way. And Sam Bradford, you know, he came out saying he wants to be traded. It's kind of funny because he's in a no-win situation as a quarterback because he sits there, and if he doesn't say anything, people will say, well, well, well he, he's not mad that he drafted a quarterback. Yeah. You know, now, when he says something, everybody says, well, what are you mad about? You signed a two-year contract, right? So he's sitting in one of those positions where it's a no-win situation for Sam Bradford. He's got to be professional about it. He signed the deal. He didn't have to sign it. He could have got out of there. You know, he didn't have to sign the contract. He got it. But he, he decided to. Now, obviously, things, things have changed uh, since, since the last time he signed his contract. But right now, I think going forward, they're looking for a future. And it, didn't seem, it doesn't seem to be Sam Bradford. That's for sure. Stephen A. Well, I think that coach is right. I just think he's not complete with his thought. Uh, when coach says you would keep him, he's absolutely right. But I would add, you tell him to shut the hell up and go out there and do the job. <laughs> Let's say that. Uh, you, you're Sam Bradford. You ain't John Brady. You ain't Peyton Manning. You ain't Drew Brees. You ain't Aaron Rodgers. You're none of these people, okay? There's been a couple of seasons where you've been injured. Your durability is questionable, which means your availability is questionable. And even when you were there, although you would have passed for 4,000 yards had you played all 16 games as opposed to just 14 games where you threw for 3,700-plus yards, you had, what was it, uh, 14 touchdowns, 19 touchdowns, 14, 14 interceptions? interceptions yes. uh, the, the reality is clear. Sam Bradford has a lot to prove. There's a lot of people that didn't even want Sam Bradford back. So the fact that here you are because the Eagles drafted a quarterback, you feeling a bit melancholy if not ticked off or whatever the case may be, what the hell did you think they needed to provide you with? Security? What is this? Are you retiring? Do you want social security? Because that's the only kind of security I think you deserve. <laughs> Outside of that, you got to go out there and prove it. What amazes me is that you got a whole bunch of guys, I don't want to say a whole bunch, but a few guys, they get their money before they prove themselves. They've had an opportunity to prove themselves, came up short on that regard, but then want you to invest in them further so you can guarantee them the opportunity to prove themselves again when they've already had ample opportunity to prove themselves, but they didn't. And all I'm saying is Sam Bradford, not only did he sign a contract, he didn't play last year for free. You know, when he missed nine games due to his injury, he was still getting paid. When he missed six games in 2011 due to injury, he still got paid. So now somebody has the temerity, the unmitigated goal to sit there and tell you that you need to step up and earn your job unless if you, wanna, if you want that kind of security and he's whining about how he wants to get traded, be quiet, kick rocks, shut up and go out there and play and prove that you are worthy of the investment that you want them to make in you. Very simple. Hmm. I think it's even simpler. Oh, boy. What are you going to do? Cut him? I'm going to trade Sam Bradford. I'm going to put him on the block right now. I'm going to hope that John Elway would be intrigued enough to give me something for Sam Bradford, to whom I have just bet $22 guaranteed million on. It's a big contract to swallow, but maybe John Elway is getting desperate enough that he would jump at it. Maybe. I, I don't know that, but I'm just saying maybe somebody would want Sam Bradford because here's my point. They just bet a king's ransom to go up to number two. We presume to take a kid from North Dakota State that they aren't just sold on. They believe he's going to be a big star. You can't bet that kind of future on somebody unless you are convinced he's going to be a big long-term star in this league. Just the way the Rams appear to be convinced that Jared Goff is going to be a big long-term star in the city of Los Angeles. So what happened the last time we saw this with Luck and RG3? Did they not play right out of the box? Yeah. And they both played pretty well. Robert played great once he got a hold of it. Obviously got hurt at the end of that year, but he was the offensive rookie of the year. 
They, he took that team to the division title. So yeah. I'm saying, why, if he's that great, if you, you bet that kind of package on him, don't you feel some pressure to play him? Aren't you trying to turn around the Eagles quickly? Are you going to put him on ice for two or three years the way they did Aaron Rodgers behind Brett Favre? You don't have Brett Favre. No, you, you got I, Sam Bradford, well, right? Uh, yeah, you have Sam Bradford, a new regime. Um, you, you've just... You've changed your whole way of playing football now on both sides of the ball. Okay, but don't you think, you know those Philly fans? You oh, don't yeah. think they're going to be they'll, screaming for Wentz sure. to play? Sure, they'll, they'll want him to play just yeah. like they did down in um, uh, Jacksonville mm -hmm. with Bortles. And okay. I said you should play Bortles. I said play yeah. the guy. Why do you right. just play? Okay. Eagles are right. maybe in a little bit different right now. A little, little, maybe they feel like we're closer than okay. maybe Bortles was. Okay, in, in but, that but maybe because they're closer, they could surround him with better they talent could. than Bortles got and, surrounded and, with. But I don't think you trade him now. I think if you want to trade him, you wait till the draft's over with. Cause there's gonna well, be I mean, some, you could wait till after the yeah, draft. Yeah, there's going to be some, sure teams, there gonna be some teams that want a quarterback can't get one. Then he's more valuable to Okay, you. sure. So okay, you wait, no, you, I, you, I got you, it. You, but you were saying hold on to camp. Well, and I'm you, saying soon. I, I would. What I'm saying is, yeah. yeah, because you never know what's going to happen with this young kid. I mean, you can't. You can say, well, I'll put all you, on you him. You better know. But what right? if he got hurt know. or something happened in camp? You know. well, just, you gotta, you just gotta, just, you God gotta. God forbid. Remember, you, know, you, like, you, you, you have, he, he's part of your organization. Okay. You can do what you want with him. But let's put this other guy, let's get him out on the field. Let's watch him play. Because the one thing you cannot do, and you can't deny the players, is that when you go to work every day and they watch guys practice, every player listens to his eyes. Mm -hmm. He watches other guys play. And if Wentz or whoever the rookie quarterback is lighting it up, yeah. you can't walk back in that locker room as a head coach and say, you know what, we're going to start Bradford because we paid him $2 million. The players are going to say, coach, that guy's a better player. You need to play this guy. Okay. okay. So, so what if you're coaching these Eagles and you go to camp with all three quarterbacks because you signed Ooh, Chase Daniels to back up, right? Yes, you gave yes. him some money. Yep. Okay. So John Gruden made the great point. You got three quarterbacks. You don't have enough a lot reps. Of money. Okay, what are you going to do? Well, you know? first of all, the only one who knows the offense is Daniels. So you yeah. have to worry about him. He's not going to get as many reps. He's not going to be a starter. He is the backup guy. Okay. You know that. Yeah. You're just trying to determine now, is it going to be the rookie that you draft, or is it going to be Sam Bradford? And it's probably on at the reps, end of the you mean. On reps. That's yeah. who's going to get the reps. That's who's going to get the reps. Okay. Okay. Chase Daniels has the reps. All right. He's got them for because two or three Kansas years City, in Kansas yeah. City. All he right. knows the offense. Okay. He's there to be the backup quarterback. Okay. Who's but, the star? But, but all I ever hear is that, that Doug Peterson and Frank Reich right. yeah. and John DeFilippo yes. are quarterback makers. And yes. I, I think there's a little bit of a runaway theme going on here. I think they're getting a little too much credit. Yeah. But whatever, if they're that good. If, if they can immediately transform this kid from North Dakota State into yes. a pro quarterback, you should go for it, man. Oh, we'll see it. That, that, that will be their intentions. Yeah. They right. want to get him caught up as fast yeah. as they can yeah. with professional football. Okay. And if that is the fact, after the second preseason game, if you're looking at this kid and say, you know what, we got to get more reps. He's got to play. Then you're on the phone, and you're trying to deal All Sam right. Bradford. Okay. By that, it, it may be too late at that point no, for John Elway. Uh, I don't know that. Yeah. Don't know that. We'll see. Don't know that. Interesting how it all plays out. When we come back, Kevin Durant bounces back in a big way. But who are the real Thunder? That Ooh. is the question. What happened to those who Thunder? Who are they, Herm? They won them Thunder. They blew them boys out, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You worried about them <laughs> Thunder, huh? You don't even like to get a hold of those Spurs, huh? Like, like mess around with Kevin Durant. Bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. I'm ready. Oh, yeah, OK. We going to yeah. see. Going to get interested. <laughs> mm -hmm. The Cavs and Pistons face off tonight in Game 3 at 7 Eastern on ESPN. The Cavs have a 2-0 series lead, but now the series moves to Detroit. Stephen A., you are in Detroit. What do you expect to see tonight? What I expect to see is an explosion from LeBron James. Again, I like Stanley Roberts a lot. I think he's got a very bright future, but he opened his mouth in a, in a way that even Coach Stan Van Gundy admitted made him cringe a little bit. And I expect LeBron James to make him pay for it. Certainly, he might decide to be judicious and put up a triple-double. Or he may just go berserk, skip, and drop 40 to 50. But something is going to happen tonight mm. for, Le for LeBron James to remind Stanley Roberts, I'm a four-time league MVP and a two-time champion. Stanley Johnson. Stanley Johnson. Right. It's all right. yeah. I, Stanley I the Johnson, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I keep saying Stanley the same Johnson. Thing. Yeah, we both covered yeah. Stanley Roberts yeah. once upon yeah, a time. Yeah, Stanley Johnson. Yeah. Not Stanley Roberts LSU, Stanley oh, Johnson yeah. for the Detroit Pistons. Right. Yes. Now, are you you're gonna be at the game tonight? 
I'm here. That's why I'm in Detroit. Okay, I want to make sure because I'm here. I, I got to tell you, I agree with your premise. I agree LeBron is, is going to be primed for this one. I just like the guts and heart of this young Detroit team, especially at home. And you brought up the point the other day. You remember the heyday with, with all the buildup and the hubbub in that, that arena. It, it just could be explosive in there. I, I think Detroit's going to win this game tonight. I'm not saying they're going to win the series, obviously. I just like their, their spunk at home. I, I think... They'll rise up and win one game in this series, and it's going to be. This is obviously a tur the turning point uh, game. I'm, I, I get what you're saying, though. It, it was not smart what Stanley Johnson said. I think they would have won tonight if Stanley Roberts had not opened his mouth. Stanley I think the Johnson. fact that he did is different, and I think yeah. Stanley Johnson. Yes, I don't know why you, you say Stanley Roberts. Stanley Johnson. But let yeah. me say this to you: If there was ever a moment, not that LeBron has much to prove. But when we talk about the old school guys, the Kobe's, the LeBron, uh, the Michael Jordans, and, and, and beyond, you remember when people used to chirp and, and, and just make a mere mention of these yep. dudes? Mm -hmm. And they'd step out on the court and annihilate you? Could you imagine if Stanley Johnson yep. had done this to one of those players? Nope. It would, what it would be have over, been like? man. So this is one of those yep. moments I, I where it. tonight nope. LeBron needs to go at him like that. Okay, well, you, you're going to have to walk into that arena tonight <laughs> now, and all those, those Piston fans are going to say, Stephen A., you don't have our back anymore, right? Well, I love Detroit. I think it's a great sports town. And I love Stan Van Gundy and the job that he's done. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that. And I, I like Reggie Jackson. I like Stanley Johnson. So do I. I like Andre Drummond. I like But him. I don't think you're good enough to beat LeBron if LeBron comes out there hell-bent on destroying you. Okay. Detroit, I got your back. I well, got you go your back. You go ahead tonight. and do that. All right. I'm in the house. There ain't no way. I ain't worried about it. <laughs> all right. I ain't worried about it. These are my peeps. Yeah. It's all love. So love. All right. Let's go to the other one here. After winning game one, the Pacers have lost two straight, including last night's 16-point loss at home in game three. Paul George struggled from three last night, making only one of his eight shots. Stephen A., how much blame should George get for those losses? I'm not going to give him but so much blame. He's a star. He showed up to play. But other guys have to show up to play. I'm looking at last night. Monte Ellis shooting three and nine from the field, only scoring seven points. George Hill only putting up 13. LaVoy Allen and other guys, what are they doing? I mean, the only guy that came to help him was Miles Turner. I'm not going to put that on Paul George. I think Paul George has had a great season. I think that he's somebody that's reminded the world of what a star he is, but he needs help. And other guys got to show up and do their job especially against Toronto now that Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan seem to have gotten it going a little bit. They need to step up and help Paul George. He can't do it all by himself. Okay, but after the Pacers convincingly won game one at Toronto, you and I both said, that's it, Indiana's going to win this series. I think we both said in six games, right? Yeah. And the Pacers came up small in game two and smaller at home in game three. Right. And I, I get what you say about Monte Ellis. I, I have no idea what, what this was. This was just nothing. I, I don't know what happened. He but, didn't show up. He didn't show up. But Paul George, we both agreed, is easily the best player on the floor. And Damari Carroll showed up for Toronto last night at, in Indianapolis because he was all over Paul George. I watched a lot of this game. And Paul George was just shut down last night. When he goes one for eight from three, that, that's going to be a problem. You're, you're going to have a hard time. This game was over at halftime to me. Toronto came right out and took control. And I, this is an Indiana team that I, I try to like. I've tried to like them all year because any given night, they beat my Spurs in Indianapolis. I thought, boy, they look great in that game. But some nights, the whole team doesn't show up. So in this case, the whole team didn't show up, and now I, I don't think I'm picking the Pacers well, anymore to win this series. I don't blame you for that, but I'm going to still stick with them for now. But I, I'm rooting for my man Dwayne Casey because I'm a fan. But I will tell you this, Damari Carroll was a huge pickup that they got in the offseason from Toronto for specifically this kind of purpose, to defend the likes of a Paul George. DeMar Carroll can defend, and Paul George is going to have his work cut out for him. But it's real easier to defend him when no one else will show up. Yeah. When others show up to help him, you've got to change things a little bit. So the Monte Ellis of the world, the George Hills of the world, and yeah. others, they've got to show up and help. And Frank Vogel has got to figure out a way he to does. free Paul George up a little bit more. So we've gone this whole show and we failed to even bring up the San Antonio Spurs that do play tonight. 
at, at Memphis, they? they play, you know, and, and nobody talks you know about what we nobody failed to cares. bring up. No, no one radar. does. You know, Just you know what team. we failed to bring up, Jack, uh, uh, Skip? Yeah. My man Jake Arrieta for the Chicago Cubs pitching a no-hitter. That's uh, what we, we don't failed care to bring up. That. We yep. care about the Spurs more than that. Well, so I care about the no hitter too. I care okay. about Steph the no hitter. Curry, oh, finishing oh, well, fourth and most improved. Play. Yeah, let's talk about We've everything. We've got five seconds Spurs. left. I do have your back, San Antonio. Oh, here we you go. You keep on doing that against Memphis. Stephen, what a hey, risk! You're really going out there on the limb.